Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my little corner of the internet where I talk about whatever I want, which is mostly movies and TV. I'm getting faster at this. So today I want to talk about German coming-of-age movies on Netflix. Why? Because why not? Honestly, like, let's go, right? The best part of Netflix, I've mentioned this before, but the best part of Netflix is the ability to enjoy so many foreign movies and TV shows, explore some different cultures, hear some different languages. So let's make the best out of it, okay? Uh, I think that when it comes to German shows, most people are more familiar with the dark and gritty shows like Dark and now 1899. But I like light and cheerful and fluffy things, even though I mostly wear black. You don't know that because right now I'm wearing purple, but I do. And so that's what I want to talk about. Indulge me. All right, let's go. So the first movie I want to talk about is Issy and Aussie. Issy and Aussie tells the story of Isabel, Issy, and Oscar, Aussie. They are two young people who lead completely opposite lives. Issy is the daughter of billionaires. She's been given everything in life, whether she wants it or not. Her future is basically set. She's terrible at school, but her parents, you know, they, they bribe the schools for her to ensure that she will get into the best university. Of course, this is not what Issy wants. She has a talent for cooking. She wants to be a chef, she wants to go to New York, to a culinary school, and become a professional chef, which of course her parents are completely against. In order to convince her parents to give her the money to go to culinary school, because she's still, you know, a spoiled brat, she decides to rebel. And how is she going to do that? Well, she meets Ozzy at a fast food restaurant and comes to the conclusion he is the perfect person to drive her parents crazy. You see, Ossie is, like I said, the opposite of Issy. He wasn't giving, given anything in life. He lives with his mother, who's a single parent. His grandfather is in jail, in and out of jail the entire life, his entire life, and the only thing that Ossie knows is how to fight. So he is training to become a professional boxer, he has a big match coming up, and he needs the money to pay the entry fees to the match, but of course his mother is also in heavy debt and he has to pay that, so he has no money for any. So the two come to an agreement that they will pretend to date and when Izzy's parents try to bribe her to break up with him, she will get her money and pay Ozzy's debts. So that's the story. We love an opposites attract story, don't we? Yes, we do. I do. I think it's fun. And this is exactly what it is. And add to it, you know, several oddball characters, mainly on Ozzy's side. We have his best friend and his grandfather. We have a few weirdo employees at that fast food joint. And we're good to go, you know. it's We don't need much more in life for a fun little movie. And I really like this movie. I watched it a couple times. And even though Izzy is a real spoiled brat. You know, you know, if you really want to just go and you know do your thing, but no, she she wants that money that she didn't earn. <laughs> so it's a bit, mm, it's hard to feel for her because the intentions behind what she's doing are so bratty. But still, you're able to really you you don't relate to her, but you're able to feel for her because she works so well with. Aussie and the chemistry between the two actors is really good. They make it very believable, if you will. Now, I have to say that, you know, modern German movies with very old German people, it's, you know, interesting. <laughs> I, and, and Aussie's grandfather is very borderline. He's not, especially because he's in and out of jail, he doesn't have the opportunity to grow and expand his worldview, if you will. There is no Nazism, I swear. But <laughs> it, it's, he's very old school and it clashes with the more woke modern Germans. They play it off well enough and you don't feel that discomfort, but they acknowledge it in a little bit. So it's interesting to have that in there. Of course, Izzy and Ozzy 
learn and grow from each other and I don't think it's a spoiler to say that obviously they develop real feelings for each other. I think it's a really fun casual viewing, very uncomplicated, a very fun watch, highly recommend it. If you really like rom-coms, opposites attract, and different languages, why not? Also there's a lot of German hip-hop in this, if you're into hip-hop that might be your thing. All right, let's move on to the next movie, and that is Rumspringer. Which, other than being a really, really fun word to say, is a movie that centers around um, Jakob, who's a young Amish man who goes to Berlin for his Rumspringer. And if you've never heard of this word. The Amish people, once you turn 18, I believe, I'm not sure as to the exact age, but when you come of age, you get to go on this self-discovery journey where at the end of it, you can choose to either come back to the Amish culture or leave it forever. And so it, I think it's a really interesting thing, especially because we know very little about the Amish and obviously I doubt they had a lot of input on this movie, but it's still interesting. Okay, so let's get back to the movie itself. Jakob goes to Berlin for his Rumspringa and as he lands, he manages to lose his luggage and so instead of going to stay with relatives, he ends up you know, wandering the streets of Berlin and running into a very Amish looking hipster German man named Alf, whom he ends up sharing a flat with. You know, I feel like this movie in the wrong hands would have devolved into like American pie territory because you have this very, very innocent character at the center of it with all of the debauchery of the modern world. Could have gone that way. It does not go that way. Of course, there are, you know, a lot of those types of things. There are sex scenes and there's drugs and there's all of that. But at the center of it, they're not trying to make a disgusting comedy out of it. They're just trying to make a heartwarming story about friendship and discovering yourself and knowing who and what to prioritize in life. It's, it's really nice. It's fun. It's cute. It has a lot of heart. Jacob is, like I said, a very, very innocent character, but you don't feel that the people around him take too much advantage of it. He's very likable, and so he makes it very hard to be mean to him. Having said that, he is not flawless, and he does make pretty bad mistakes, which allow him to grow alongside the other characters. So if you enjoy fish out of water stories, I think this one definitely fits the bill. It also It's also very beautiful. It, I know, there's something very, very heartwarming about this movie, so I recommend it a lot as well. And finally, our last movie for today is How to Be Really Bad. Für die Arbeit des Teufels. True. So this, I feel this movie is a combination of the previous two, but with like a supernatural twist. So Lilith is the daughter of the devil. She is itching to get out into the real world and spread evil. But her father feels she is too young. So they come to an agreement where she will get to try out her evilness for one week, where during that time she will need to turn one person, a girl named Greta, evil. If she succeeds, she can be free to go anywhere she wants and spread her evil ways. But if she fails, she will go work in bookkeeping in hell forever. Lilith accepts the terms and she then meets Greta and her family, who are repulsively good. She then realizes it's gonna be much harder than she initially thought. During the week, she becomes interested, of course, in the school bad boy, Sam, which derails her plans further because a devil in love is a useless devil. This movie is so cute. Like, again, it, we have a story of friendship built around two opposite characters, and on top of that, we get to explore what is evil. Could it be good for us to be evil sometimes? I love 
opposites attract characters but also fish out of water character so both of those movies show up in here in terms of like i love the styling of both lilith and greta it's not too on the nose in how they're dressed but like lilith is very clearly bad girl while greta is very clearly good girl so it's it's very very cute there's something very fun that they did with lilith's character which is to balance her evilness 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 <laughs> evilness with badassness there's somewhat of a her more of a, a wish fulfillment character you know, like it really makes you root for her in many aspects of her evilness and then greta is pretty reminiscent of mandy moore's character from a walk to remember if you've ever watched that movie very innocent and pure there's a bit of a holier than thou attitude going on there but not in a very condescending way the love interest characters are more talked about than shown in terms of their personalities which is unfortunate but then again the entire plot of this movie takes place during one week so not much room for growth and exploration there also i think it is pretty funny that our main character's purpose is to turn people evil but everything is done in a very pg-13 way there's no real corruption of the soul it's all very very innocent there is a much darker version of this story somewhere if someone wants to make a gritty reboot of it but for now this one is just cute and sweet at the end of the day you know all three of the movies share a very similar theme of people learning from each other and realizing you don't have to be just one thing it's a good message to pass on and one that is more and more necessary i feel so i recommend all three of these movies it's a good way to start the year <laughs> just with something nice and fun so yeah have you watched these movies would you like to what is your favorite coming of age movie of any country <laughs> let me know in the comments below don't forget to like subscribe and do all the youtubey things and i'll see you next time bye